Some people may not be aware, but there are actually two alliance trials that have evaluated the role of radiation and modified fulfurinox in patients with pancreatic cancer. The first one, uh, 21101, was a trial that evaluated modified fulfurinox followed by chemoradiation. Now, this was a study that was done at just a smaller group of high volume uh, centers that see a lot of pancreatic cancer patients. Um, and and that, that trial was really a feasibility study to see if modified fulfurinox could be safely given with radiation. And in that study, you know, I think the take home was that it was feasible um, and that the outcomes were actually fairly favorable compared to historical controls um, and also showed that it can that that chemo radiation did appear to result in further downstaging in addition to modified fulfurinox. I think it's important to note, though, that the um, the vessel reconstruction rate in that trial was higher than in the subsequent trial, which I'll get into it in a little bit. And I think that may speak to, although it's, 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 you know, it's hard to say, but that may speak to some of the aspects as it relates to surgical um, expertise and experience in, in this study versus the next study. And, and so the next study, um, 21501, Alliance 21501, um, is the one that was just recently uh, published um, that uh, evaluated, it was essentially a randomization up front. So this is really important to stress that the randomization occurred at, at baseline at diagnosis. Um, so, so basically patients were relegated to um, uh, modified fulfurinox alone followed by surgery or modified fulfurinox followed by uh, hypofractionated radiation, which is a five fraction or five treatment regimen of radiation, as opposed to the 28 days, which was done in the previous trial. And again, um, the radiation is not given concurrently with chemotherapy. And then again, patients were evaluated for surgical exploration. Um, the, the, the surprising finding is that the, um, the radiation arm did indeed have a, a lower survival compared to the chemotherapy only arm. But I think it's really important to acknowledge that this was a very small study. Only 40 patients received radiation in the radiation arm. And also again, that these patients were, were randomized prior to receiving any chemotherapy. So um, in an evaluation of, of the characteristics of these patients, um, there were some findings that to suggest that perhaps there may have been some imbalance between the two arms, specifically the CA-199 was not um, uh, was not stratified at all in the study. And there was a higher uh, um, median uh, CA-99 in the radiation arm. And then also surprisingly, there, there, there appeared to be um, some additional progression um, in the radiation arm and also for reasons unknown yet, where uh, the decision by the surgeon was to not operate despite the fact that there was uh, no evidence of metastatic disease. So I think that the take home of this study is that while it provides some very important information for us to divine, uh, define and, and create the next trials, I don't think it should be a study that, that, that really uh, closes the door on radiation in this disease. And I think it's also important to note that if you look at those patients that received full therapy and went on to get surgery, there was no significant difference between the two arms. Um, again, suggesting that, um, that, you know, again, radiation for some patients should still be considered. Um, finally, I think another important finding is that the, the radiation added little to no toxicity to the regimen. So I think, again, it, it opens up the door for um, how do we best utilize this technology and, and, and this approach in future uh, studies.